Hi, this is uh, Turquoise. Um, welcome to my channel and my podcast. If you're wa listening to my uh, podcast, um, if the picture suddenly falls down and there's a crash, it's because my phone fell off the stand. But uh, that's the joke of the day. I'm getting real serious right now. Um, I'm really tired of my uh, mental illness. Really tired of anxiety, really tired of depression, really tired of my, uh, let me make sure that camera's on, really tired of my uh, distorted thinking uh, getting the better of me. I want to discuss, maybe uh, very briefly, share three incidents that happened yesterday at the IOP. Um, yes, I've gone back to the IOP, done it of my own volition, and done it on my terms, and... Uh, confronted my counselor's behavior, confronted the staff's behavior, and uh, spoken to the director, and I'm still not really sure I really got anything out of it or any change out of it, but um, I made it very clear to them that I was not gonna tolerate any discriminatory behavior, no matter how small, towards LGBTQ. And um, if, if Donald Trump is watching this video, I understand He's really scared of uh, the gay people taking over, I can imagine, and uh, fear can take many forms. Enough of that. That's another uh, prerequisite of uh, what I'm going to talk about. Maybe it might apply a little bit too, because uh, I have to learn not to give a darn too much of what people think of me, or what people think of what I am. Um, Three things happened uh, yesterday um, where I was interacting with uh, other humans and it was pretty uh, it was pretty traumatic and it probably would have been so traumatic I might not have been able to come up for air and function uh, maybe 20 years ago maybe even five years ago I don't know my mentor and I made a bet that if I didn't uh, get a hold of myself and get a little stronger in five years and deal with it, I was probably not going to survive on this planet. Some illness was going to get me or I was going to unalive myself or some, some other darn thing or get addicted to something and it was going to just take me out. But um, I think the reason, the very reason I'm still alive today is because um, I'm trying to get a grip on it. I am I'm starting to get a little bit of a grip on it right now. Um, just learning how to how to be still within myself when I especially when I think I'm under uh, verbal emotional or even maybe physical attack from other people now the uh, the percentage of my actually being physically attacked is probably very small but I'm vulnerable every day to verbal attack emotional attack uh, spiritual attack um, Anywhere I go, even the IOP, you know, we're all human, we're all complicated, we're all dealing with things, and we clash and bump into each other lots of times. Uh, and um, I'm going to look at my email real quick because my mentor sent me an email uh, telling me what, what to uh, talk about. Uh, he wanted to... Um, he wanted to... Um, do it, you know, do my, uh, yeah, I got an email from someone else. Yeah, that happens. I'm going to have to take care of something a little later. Okay. Um, okay. Post. All right. I'm going to give everybody uh, pseudonyms because I don't want to mention any names. That's the last thing I want to do right now. Um, I was in the lunch line yesterday. I was, I was getting in line to get lunch at the IOP. They, uh, they serve food, which I think is really awesome. And, um, I was waiting in line for my food and I didn't know that, uh, that Dana was behind me. I'll just give her a pseudonym. I didn't know she was behind me and she's a person, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, in, a, in another video, but, um, she panicked when, when we were in the restroom together one day. Um, 
I didn't know she was in the restroom and the door looked like it was open and her feet were somehow pointed away from the bottom of the door so I didn't see her feet. I always look down and you know to see if anyone's in the bathroom because sometimes the door is just they look like they're closed but they're not. Well in this case the door looked like it was open and I didn't know if she was in there and she panicked and shut the door on my hand and I almost lost my damn hand that day and that was so traumatic and I did not I could not get rid of the feeling on my hand for the rest of the day of the door being slammed on it. I was lucky I was not hurt just very badly shaken. I didn't know yesterday you know fast forward to yesterday I didn't know she was behind me in line and um, thank goodness my mental wellness process helped with this and I watched a lot of videos on how to deal with trauma and I learned I learned a little how to apply them. My mentor has been working with me. Um, I've been training myself to overcome that kind of stuff to over to realize that it's my brain protecting me. Every time I go into the restroom now I, uh, I realize that my brain is just protecting me. My brain is saying Carol remember what happened to you. You need to be careful. You know someone might someone might slam the door on your hand or yell at you when you come in here, but you do need to still use the bathroom. But are you going to let it take over? No, I don't think I want to do that anymore. So she was behind me in line at lunch and um, I was I was getting my picking up my napkins and sometimes the napkins stick together when you try to pick them up. I don't want to pick up too many. Um, I want to save some for the other clients and I was picking up napkins and they were stuck together and it, so it took maybe a moment to a little bit of time to do that and um, Dana whispered behind me hurry up like that she goes hurry up and I just I turned around and I'm like I gotta get my napkins ma'am you know I just said that I said I need the napkins are stuck together hold on a second and she glared at me and I I turned immediately back to when I was seven years old again I regressed and behaviorally, I didn't make a scene, but I got my napkins and I walked on with my tray, but I had to take a little pace around the, uh, the yard. And then one of the nurses noticed. I was just, I was processing my, dumping my feelings to myself. And I almost called my mentor in Canada because I was just really traumatized by it. And one of the nurses noticed I was pacing and noticed my, my tray was on the table untouched. And she walked up to me and she said, Carol, what's the matter? And I said, and I said, I need to check in with you. I'm really upset and I need to, I need to, uh, make a, a comment on what's going on here at the IOP. And she's like, what's the matter? And I said, I told her what happened. And she goes, uh, you don't have to let, let that bother you. We'll, we'll take a note of it but you don't have to let it bother you. You're in a safe place. Don't worry about someone telling you to hurry up. And I said, uh, you know, note the napkins stick together sometimes. Um, I, I try to follow the rules of get my lunch and scram, you know, and sit down. But this lady, you know, she, you know, she's acted like this before, you know, remember the bathroom door incident. And they're like, okay. But, um, I, uh, I overcame it a lot faster than I would have, I think, five or 20 years ago. I would have because uh, if I if I didn't overcome it, it was probably going to add to me being drained emotionally and drained even physically. And then uh, something else happened, uh, maybe, I don't know, an hour later, um, there was an altercation in the group. Um, someone in the group, I was witnessing this, someone in the group thought that someone else was being racist. Um, they were having a discussion in group. We were having a discussion in group and, uh, someone made a comment and said, uh, oh, uh, this person's, this person's acting like this because, uh, because she's not Mexican or whatever. And I perked up immediately and I looked at them and, uh, the other person, uh, I think they were, they were, uh, Spanish speaking and they're like, you got a problem with Mexicans? And I just, I was observing them. And, you know, it was a perfectly natural response to that other person's comment, but I thought, oh my God, if it were me and I were Mexican and I were living, you know, if I were sitting there, um, maybe five years ago, I would have popped off like that. 
But now I might have said something like, uh, um, you know, interesting comment. Uh, what do you what do you mean by that? And you know, I would have kept my voice down maybe. Hot topics, man. Racism is a hot topic. They almost got into an altercation. It, it almost came to blows. And uh, the uh, Spanish-speaking guy goes, you want to do something about it? Do you want to go outside? And then the therapist cuts in and says, wait, wait, wait a minute, you guys. You know, it's okay. You can calm down. And uh, I just sat there, and I observed my adrenaline going up. I observed my brain, my brain uh, giving me a primal message saying, Carol, you're in a potentially dangerous situation. Just be still and uh, sit. And I did. And I let myself be empathetic towards both of them. But I didn't, you know, I, I told myself the therapist is, let's see how the therapist handles this, you know. So uh, that happened. And then I went out during snack time and all the tables were full. And um, I couldn't find a place to sit down and eat my snack. And uh, finally one client got up and uh, I thought the table was free for me to use. And I sat down and uh, I waited maybe a couple of seconds to see if he was going to come back and sit down and it didn't look like he was going to. So I went and sat at the table and uh, I was settling down to eat my snack and drink my milk. And um, then he came back and he stood over the table and glared at me. And I just, I, I picked up my snack and, and said, sorry, you know, sorry about that. And he just kept on glaring at me. And I, I started getting all scared like I was seven years old again. I was afraid he was going to beat me up. And I knew he probably wasn't going to. I mean, the adult part of me knew I, he wasn't going to. But um, he was glaring at me. I swear to God, I, he was glaring at me as if to say, What are you doing at my table, Carol? You know, that's my table. You need to get out of here. Like that, that kind of that kind of look, and um, again, the nurse uh, noticed I was getting up off the table and noticed I was upset, and she's like, "Carol, what, what's wrong?" God, twice in a row, twice in a row, and I said, and I said, "I'm afraid that George doesn't want me to sit at the table. He he got mad at me," and and they're like, "Does the table have anyone's name on it, Carol?" And I said, "No, but uh, I'm not in power here." He looked really angry. You know, he looked like he was mad. And I and I named I named the person. You know, George is the pseudonym. I said, you know, George said you know, pseudonym. George uh, doesn't want me to sit at the table. And uh, please t talk to him. You know, we don't we don't need to have that behavior. I thought this was a nice place. A lot of people are getting getting mad, right? And getting mad today. What's going on? You know, I can't sit at a table and I can't wait in line. I'm getting really, you know, this is starting to get to me a little bit. I was getting upset again. But uh, after uh, the situation was was uh, de-escalated, I uh, overcame it maybe in five minutes. Again, you know, that's the good news. I would have been upset all day and I might not have finished my snack. I might not have eaten my lunch either. Um, then we had a group where we had to do an exercise where we had to tell affirmations to each other and, you know, pair off and do that. And I got really scared and I said, excuse me, um, can I not participate in this? This is a little too intense for me. And they said, uh, sure, uh, you can just sit and observe. And I did. And my feelings came up and I realized I still had a lot of work to do on myself. And I realized too, ladies and gentlemen, that um, the reason I couldn't participate in the exercise at the end and the reason I couldn't uh, eat, you know, sit at the table and the reason I had, I was scared to wait in line for lunch, the reason I reacted to all three of the, four of those incidents was this. I have to deal with how I feel about myself and I have to deal with whether or not I can hold my own and stand up for myself if somebody uh, challenges me. If someone tells me to hurry up, implying that I'm in the way. If someone tells me that I'm uh, sitting at their table or taking up their space, which implies that I'm inconveniencing them. Um, if someone uh, challenges me and, and says, uh, I want you to sit and let someone say affirmations 
what if they don't know what to say to me? That's happened before in the past. So again, three times, four times, my adrenaline kept going up. But uh, the good news is I handled it. I handled it better than I might have before. And uh, I was given a chance to share at the end of that group. And I said, the reason I'm having trouble with this group is because I don't feel like I deserve anything. And I didn't share about the other incidents, but I thought to myself, I don't feel like I deserve any love. I don't feel like I deserve to share a table with someone or to sit at, sit at the table, even when, when no one's at the table. I don't feel like I deserve to uh, stand up for, uh, wait a minute, this table doesn't have anyone's name on it, George. Why are you looking at me like that? You know, or, you know, what, what, what's the matter? You know, what do you want? You know, do you want something? I'll get up, I'll get up and move if you want me to, but I would rather not. You know, I thought you were finished, you know, like that. Maybe not tell him in such an angry way, but the way he was glaring at me, I think my own brain wanted to protect me again and get mad at him and say, what are you looking at me like that for? Come on! You know, and then the woman behind, and then Dana, you know, telling me to hurry up, you know, what's the matter, you know? Why do you want me to hurt? You know, please, you know, there is plenty of food. There is plenty of drink. You know, if you're tired, you know, geez, the napkins are sticking together. Life is getting a little bit lifey, Dana. Okay. But, um, I don't like getting mad at people, you know, directly. I feel, I feel mad, angry. You know, I feel defensive inside. I don't like you know, confronting people. And I don't like it when people confront me, whether I, I deserve it or not. You know, it's extremely uncomfortable, obviously. So anyway, that's what happened to me yesterday. That can explain also why I'm extremely, oh, I was extremely tired last night. I could barely even go over and visit my girlfriend, but I did. I made myself go and visit my girlfriend. Is that something I want to do? I don't want to keep holding up in the room here. So uh, that's what I wanted to share. Um, I think the way I handled it was, yeah, I can't live my old life anymore. You know, my, my old life is going to destroy me. My old life where I feel like I have to, um, where I have to, um, you know, obey everybody else. Where I feel like I have to please everybody else. Now there's something on my email that I'd like to share if I can find it. There's like another uh, formula um, on my email, and it, and it goes like this. It's sort of like, I don't know if it's a, a poem or not, but it's something that I wrote a long time ago with my mentor's help, and it goes like this. If I continue to live my life, dot, 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 and I'll, I'll read it just a second. Hold on one second. All right. If I continue to live my life as I've always known it, same life purpose, behavioral issues, staying in negative life experiences, staying in the past, and emotional and thoughts process, I project that I only have five and a half years left to live. I made this, I think, uh, I believe I wrote this, um, God, it says May 21st. I'm trying to find the date, the exact date that I wrote this, but I, I wrote this, I think, maybe in 2018, and uh, it goes like this. I project that I only have 5.5 years left to live. Why? Because I saw my life a month ahead. I did not like it. Imagining myself not changing at all whatsoever. No. A year later. Later. Again, no change. I don't like it. Nothing changing in five years. I am playing it forward. I am imagining myself not changing anything at all. Continuing to have crushes on people that I can't have and uh, going through the unbearable psychological torture of limerence, continuing to despise myself, continuing to live my family legacy that I have no right to be al alive, no right to be separate and authentic, continuing to believe that my life purpose is to, uh, to serve other people, to serve and be a subhuman and feel crazy, living out my role as a mentally ill person, just a crazy person. Continuing to be unable to manage my emotional and thought processes and feeling like a victim on and on and on without end. 
I'm not sure I'm even going to have five and a half years if I keep living like that. Um, I, I'll have that as I'll have that long. If I'm lucky, I'll have five and a half years. If I'm lucky, I wrote this in 2018 again. It's probably been that long now and I'm still alive because I'm freaking trying to deal with it now. I'm fighting it off now. If I'm willing to change my ways, I know I will have longer to live. Now I wrote this in May of 2024. It is now the month of May of 2024 and I have survived five and a half years since I last wrote this back in October of 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. It doesn't seem like I've changed much in my life, but I do feel different. I will now check my progress between now and five and a half years later. And, I, and if I am still around and well during that time, and if my life has changed even more, and if I feel even better, I know I have won the bet once again. Turquoise, Behavioral Module of Mental Health, Ethics, and Social Health Mesh. Yeah, I'm serious. I have got to tackle that mindset. I really do because it will, I know it will destroy me if I continue to live it. And I, I can't really counsel others. I'm not qualified. Even if I were a therapist, I don't know if I could be qualified because every mental, everybody's mental wellness process is different. Everybody's speed is different and pace is different. But I beg you and wish you this, everybody, you know, the, the way I wish for myself now, that we overcome uh, people pleasing, we overcome uh, destroying ourselves for the real or imagined, you know, respect of others. It's not really respect, it's, it's survival. We're trying to survive because we don't want people to beat us up or kill us or put us down or kick us out of the tribe, so to speak kick us out of the tribe of the human race, so to speak. That glare that George gave me was real. And um, I really was afraid that if I didn't get up off that table, he was going to fight. He was going to pick a fight with me. And I was really afraid that uh, Dana was, was, was going to attack me. She had closed the bathroom door on me, for God's sake. I almost lost my hand just because she panicked and didn't forgive me for, for fumbling. You know, I didn't even know that effing door. I didn't even know she was in there because the, the goddamn door was open because the lock was broken and she didn't even want to freaking take responsibility for what she did. So um, when someone when someone gets angry, yeah, I sympathize, but when someone gets angry and doesn't own their an anger, I'm not quite as sympathetic about that. You know, between you and me, you two, that's wrong. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, how do we stand up for ourselves without uh, fighting each other? We fight problems. We hate problems, not people. I don't hate Dana. I don't hate George. I don't hate. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't hate anyone. But I hate. I hate this. I hate this because it's destroying us. As long as we're letting our anger and fear take over, we won't survive as a, as a species. We'll continue to keep destroying one another and, and ourselves. Be safe, really.